we're going to call the meeting to order. We have um, Jake is missing and Ashley is missing for tonight. Um, uh, approval of the agenda. We have one item is truth and taxation divided in two parts um, with the truth and taxation and certify to pay 2021 levy. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So I have a motion from Cheryl and a second from Rick. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Okay, um, we go right to new business, truth and taxation, and we will turn it over to Steve Pumper. Thank you, Mr. Chair, board member, superintendent. I'm Steve Pumper with PMA Financial. I'm here tonight to present your truth and taxation information um, that is required um, to be presented for every school district in the state of Minnesota. And if Mr. Superintendent will, will guide our slide, we'll go to the second slide actually. We'll just show what the requirements are. So um, again, by Minnesota state statute, every school district in the state of Minnesota is required to hold a truth and taxation hearing before the board takes action on certifying the levy for taxes payable in the following school following calendar year. Um, so that's what we're doing tonight. Um, you have to um, do it sometime between the end of November and the end of December. And there's three, three things that you have to do during the hearing. One is present the current school year's budget. So that's the year that we're in right now, fiscal year 21, the 2021 school year. The second is the pres presentation, you have to present the proposed tax levy. And so that, again, that's for taxes payable in 2021, which actually is for the following school year. So fiscal year 22. And then the third piece um, is that anybody who is from the public who wants to comment to the board before they certify has to be allowed to speak. So when I'm done, I'll turn it back to the chair to open it up for anybody who would like to speak. So uh, when we look at this, it's a process that really starts um, in the summer um, with district administration and finance staff providing a lot of information to the Minnesota Department of Education. Um, some of that is programs that you're gonna be offering in the next school year that are you're allowed to um, levy taxes for. One of the big pieces is um, what is the enrollment expected to be for the following school year because that drives so much of the formulas um, that sets how much money you're able to um, collect from your local taxpayers. Um, back in August, this board would have met and set the date for the truth and taxation hearing. So you, again, way back in August, you would have picked December 15th and the time and location. And the reason you do that is because that then goes on all the proposed tax notices that are mailed out to all the public. So they have no, a notification of, you know, this is where I can come talk to the school board. In September, the school board would have taken action on certifying what's known as the preliminary levy. And when you do that, that means that you can't um, exceed a dollar amount when you certify the levy now in December. So you did that back in December, I'm sorry, back in September. Then in November, um, the county is required to mail all the parcel owners in your district tax statements that are showing the proposed levy, not only for the school district, but also for the city and for the county. And talking with uh, the chair actually before the meeting started, I know he got his, and so did Cheryl, so I know that that's happened in your county. So, so anybody should be able to see what the effects of the levy are for taxes payable in 21 already. And then in December, um, this year it's by um, December 28th, School boards need to certify um, the final levy. So again, you took action on preliminary levy in September. Tonight, you're planning on certifying, and I know that as part of this meeting on the agenda item is the board's um, planning on taking action on that tonight. So if we get to our first um, item and looking at uh, one of the requirements, looking at the school year 2021 budget, um, the Painesville School District, which is like many districts, um, uses fund accounting, that's a requirement by the state actually, and you have six funds that you talk about, the general fund, the food service fund, the community service fund, the building construction fund, the debt service fund, and the internal service fund. And we'll go into a little bit of detail on um, the three funds that have the asterisks by them that are a, a component of your tax levy. And that's the general fund, which is which what most people would kind of realize or think about as your as, as K-12 education, um, all of the, your teacher salaries, actually all of your salaries for all staff, um, and for, you know, your building maintenance and your bus drivers and trans transporting kids to school, all your utilities, um, all of your books and supplies, etc. 
the community service fund, um, a lot of people call it you know, community education. So that's adult, ba adult basic education or um, your children, um, preschool kids, et cetera. And then your debt service fund, which um, is your principal and interest payments and any debt the district has, has issued um, to normally do construction projects within the district. And so we'll look at those in, in a little more detail as we go forward. So when we look at the, the budget summary, this is the, the um, every school district is required to have a budget approved by the school board by June 30th um, before the next school year starts. So this is for the current year um, that we're in right now. And we see all the revenues that the board approved and all the expenditures that the board approved. And you'll notice that in the general fund, it, it's almost a balanced budget. There's a, there's a slight deficit um, budget there of about $200,000. $300,000. Um, food service is nearly balanced. Um, QD Ed is about a $50,000 deficit budget. The big piece I wanted to show here um, is the construction budget. And again, board members, I think will understand this, but it's for the community as well. Um, the revenue on there you see is only $78,000, but the expenditures is over $9.2 million. And that's because the construction that's going on, if people drive by the school, which I did tonight, you can see all the activity that's going on right now. Um, last year, when you had your you had your successful um, referendum, you then sold bonds and received all that revenue, and that was received in the fiscal year 20 budget. So last year is kind of just the opposite. You had a lot of money that came in um, that you recognized on your budget, and not as much expenditure. Well, this year the 78,000 really is just the interest that you're expected to recognize during this fiscal year, but all you're paying up, you're, you're doing a, a majority of your construction this year, so you're paying your contractors. You know, roughly 9.2 million. So I don't want to have people get you know um, out of whack that the budget might be out of whack here. Um, that's just again how it works on the fund accounting side. So all your funds are pretty much balanced, with the exception of construction. That's just because it, it goes over several fiscal years. And then if we look at um, the, the revenues by fund, again the general fund, which are, uh, people kind of consider your educational fund, receives the. Uh, the majority of revenues, 80% of that comes in. Um, your next highest piece is the debt service fund. And again, that's um, because you're paying off the bonds that you, you um, issue to do the construction that you're doing right now. And then we say, well, where does that money come from? Well, tonight we're really focusing on the taxes portion. But as you can see on this pie chart, only 21% of all the revenue um, that is used in, in this current um, fiscal year comes from the local taxpayers. 65% is coming from state aid. So um, that's all the sales tax and um, other taxes that, that go into the general fund at the state level that then get divvied out to school districts across the state. You receive a very minuscule amount, only 2% of your revenue comes from federal aid, and then your other um, piece um, makes up the, the balance of so 12%. And then if we flip, flip over to the expenditure side, this one's a little bit different um, from your revenue, again, because the construction just, you know, um, it has such a big piece for you in this, this year. So the general fund's representing 50% of all your expenditures, where the construction fund is coming in at a healthy 40% or 39%, um, just because, again, you're doing so much construction in this, one, in this one given fiscal year. So that's not your normal spending pattern. And then when we look specifically on the general fund, so your education fund, where, do all, where does all that money get spent? These are all um, codes and programs that are mandated to be used at the state level. And so if we look at the elementary and, and, and secondary regular instruction, the biggest piece of your pie, that's 46%. And if we add that up with the, the vocational education, the special education, and the instructional support um, services, you can see you're way over 60% of all your money is going directly into the classrooms, um, which is, again, very typical and what you would want to see for a district. Um, one piece I want to share with you um, is that when you went through the, your bond sale, um, you, like most districts would do when you're issuing bonds, you go to a, a third party to have to get a, a rating assigned to that. So when people are trying to purchase your bonds, they have a sense of how healthy your district is. It's kind of like your credit rating for an individual. This is a credit rating for your district. And you used to have um, an A2 rating. And if I just stay on the, the single A, it goes single A1, single A2, single A3 from top to bottom. So two is in the middle. 
and you were upgraded from an A2 to an A1. So you went up one notch, which is a great sign. And, and, and uh, rating agencies do not do that unless they think, you know, the school board and the district's doing something right. And it usually is a, um, a mix of kind of how is your financial position? Are you in a healthy financial position? What is your enrollment looking like for your district? Is that steady or is it, you know, are you even perhaps growing? And also they look a lot at what's happening within the community. What's your tax base looking like? Are you having, you know, more people move into town or is the commercial and industrial in a good spot, et cetera. So when Moody's rated you back in, in June of 2019, they thought you were doing something right. And so they gave you an upgrade. So that's a, a great kudos to the district and the staff that lead the district. Now we're gonna switch over to really um, what's gonna happen for fiscal year 22. And that's being funded by the taxes that you're collecting now in, or you will be collecting in calendar year 2021. So again, there's three funds that are affected by your levy, the general fund, and, and I show you all the different categories and I'm going to break out some of the significant differences on a, a bigger slide coming up. But in the general fund, um, last year you levied $1,574,000. This coming year, the, the goal is to levy $1,630,000. So an increase of $55,000 um, or a 3.5% increase. When we look at the community service fund, um, it's, it's almost exactly this, the same from last year to this year. Last year is 86,804. This coming year is expected to be $86,183. So only a $622 difference. It's a decrease, so just slightly under 1% decrease. And then in your debt service fund, you actually see your, your biggest uh, um, change, at least percentage-wise. Last year, you levied um, $1,311,000. This next year, you're, you're expected to levy $1,242,000. So it's a decrease of almost $69,000 or, or negative 5.26%. Um, and again, we'll look at those changes coming up here too. So when we add all those three funds together, the change is um, $14,000 or less than a half a percent. And again, it's a decrease in this case, so your levy is almost identical, you know, from this coming year to last year. So it, you could still say it's a decrease, which is nice, but it's very, you know, it's almost uh, it's almost level. $14,000 difference. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is there like a, a, a standard of, like our average, I should say, and what that number is for school districts? Like are we, like in Minnesota, does that make sense? Um, Maggie, I, I'm sorry, I just, I want to understand your question so I can answer it. You mean the dollar amount, is there percent an average? Percent change, sorry. Oh, percent change. So is that like, a, you know, like if you were to look at, and that means, I don't know if you would know that, but, or if it's more yep. comparable to our school districts, kind of what is that average percentage change? Yeah, um, um, I don't know, so I, I can't guess okay. that what the average is, but I can tell you of the, of the districts that I'm working with, um, most are having a very, very level Okay. Um, from one year to the next year this year because there really wasn't any significant legislative changes. So two things, maybe three things, really changed levies for districts. One would be a legislative change, so how they're going to do things. Um, two would be a significant enrollment change, which would either increase the total dollar amount you're going to receive or decrease it if you have less kids. And the third piece really a lot has to do with, with, with your debt part. So if you have issued bonds, um, if you're a district this year, who issued bonds, your levy's more than likely gonna go up. Just like your levy went up last year when you issued bonds as well. So, so those are the things that really um, drive a lot of stuff. So in this case for your district, you didn't issue new bonds. Um, your role was pretty steady. There wasn't any significant legislative change. So the fact that your level makes a lot of sense. Okay, so if we go on, um, we'll look at some of the major changes. And you didn't have a lot, and, and these dollar amounts aren't really that high. so. If, I'd still try to pick some of the bigger ones. So reemployment, you're levying um, $4,500 more this coming calendar year than last year. Last year, you levy $500. This year, you're planning on levying $4,500. So again, not a huge dollar amount change, but that's just, again, the effects of COVID and people um, you know, um, not being employed or expected to, or perhaps you're anticipating not being employed. Um, and, and districts, again, telling this to school board members, it's a little bit different than, than companies who are on the unemployment or reemployment. You actually are levying for the actual dollar amount that is paid to employees uh, for um, reemployment, as opposed to like a percentage, um, like a lot of companies like do. Um, Long-term facility maintenance. Uh, this actually is, uh, 
because you had some decrease in pupil units, you're actually getting a little bit less money um, than you did last year of, of $12,000. So that is lowering your W amount. And then your building lease um, went up $10,680 from last year to this year. Um, as we go on, um, your biggest adjustments actually are your debt service uh, account and then um, prior adjustments throughout all the three different funds. But I want to explain what the debt excess adjustment means. So um, as you pay off your debt for the bonds that you sold to do your construction, by state statute, you have to not only levy the principal amount and the interest amount that is due for the next year, but you have to levy 5% in addition to that. And the reason they do that is um, because, unfortunately, everyone doesn't always pay their taxes on time, you know, in every county in, in the state of Minnesota. And they want to make sure that districts have enough money to pay off their debt when they're due, because that's really important that you make your debt service payments. And so um, the state says you have to levy for 5% um, higher. Um, but if, if everyone's paying all their taxes on time, that 5% is going to, you know, continually accumulate. So you have this, this kind of excess fund balance, um, which they call debt excess. And so over a three year period of time, they do a calculation and say, all right, if you've accumulated too much money, you've got to give some of that money back. And so since you just sell, sold all these bonds last year, that 5% is a pretty big number of, of all that additional dollars. And so now you've levied, you haven't levied too much according to statute, but you've levied too much that, that you have to give some money back now because you're, you've built up your fund balance, you have to give that back. So you're gonna take $37,000 of taxes that you've collected over the last three years and give that back to taxpayers this year in the form of reducing your levy. Does that make sense? Oh, and sometimes it's a hard concept to understand. And that's only a one year thing and then it goes to a three year. No, okay. so next year, yeah, it's always a, it's a constant three right. rolling. Thing. Yep, right. exactly. And then yep. the next year will be reflected that 37. Right, next year it could be, yeah. That honestly causes havoc with a lot of districts. It goes up and down, you know, depending on it, yep. Um, and then prior year adjustments, uh, again, as one of my first slides, you know, I told you that you start in the summer and you're making estimates on what your enrollment is, what programs you might be doing, um, what, the, what um, the state's making assumptions on what's gonna happen to your tax base, et cetera. And so they always try to clean things up then at the end of the fiscal year. And sometimes those numbers go up, sometimes those goes down. In your case, um, you're, you have a, what's called a positive um, adjustment, meaning that you need to levy $21,000 more for um, um, estimates that were made in previous years. So you didn't collect enough money in previous years based on your estimates, so now you have to collect that now. Okay, so we go on. Um, this next one's just a snapshot of what a typical property stack statement um, would look like. Um, the one piece I'll mention here, and I have it on another slide as well, is that um, you'll notice that on your property tax statement, there's going to be three different categories on it. There's going to be the city portion of your tax statement, there's going to be the county portion of your tax statement, and the school portion of your tax statement. And again, at this meeting right here, we're only talking about the school portion of your tax statement. So when I show you how much a certain house value is going to pay, it's only on the school portion of your tax statements. The other piece I'll mention, just on the top of that, tax statement too, um, the, the counties do a nice job. They show, here's what the valuation of your house was last year um, that we're calculating your taxes on. And here's what your valuation of your house is for this next year that you're, we're gonna um, um, calculate your taxes on. And obviously if your valuation of your house went up for next year than it, than it was for this year, your taxes will increase just on that factor alone. All right, so um, now we look at uh, you know, what really is happening here in the Painesville School District. So your, low, your total levy is decreasing by 0.47%, so just under a, a half a percent. But the referendum market value is increasing by 5.48%, and the net tax capacity is increasing by 4.35%. It's not really super important that you understand exactly what referendum market value and net tax capacity means. In general, what it means is if you take all the value of the property within your district, and you, you apply the formulas um, that the state um, uses to calculate how much valuation um, is used to pay taxes on then, that creates like a piece, a, a big pie. Here's, here's all the valuation. And, if, and then we take the total amount that you're trying to collect and each person pays a sliver of that pie based on the valuation that, of your house or your business. Well, if your pie is growing, which is 
means a referendum market value net task capacity. If that's growing, which in your case it is by 5.48% and 4.35%, it means your pie is getting bigger. That means your sliver of the pie um, is going to be a little bit smaller of, of the total piece that you have to pay towards taxes. So generally speaking, that's a good thing um, if you know there's, there's growth in your district um, in referendum market value and net task capacity. So when we apply that and look at what would happen then to um, homeowners in Painesville of school district, I'll just look at that top line here. If you have a $100,000 home last year and your home is still valued at $100,000 for taxes payable in, in 2021, you actually receive a decrease in your school district portion of taxes of $15 or 4.46%. And then you can just read down the line of what it would look like for you know um, di different valuations of properties. Now again, I just want to restate that that means if your valuation is staying constant. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar home, and this year it went up to a hundred five thousand dollar home, that might wipe out that you know tax decrease, etc. But um, um, so that's obviously a very good position to be in. So um, I actually talked about this other factors that may affect your tax statement, obviously the valuation of your property, and sometimes they actually go down. Um, so if your valuation went down, um, that, will, that will further decrease the amount of taxes from last year to this year. Um, and then I already mentioned too that just to make sure there's other taxing entities on that tax statement too. So our, everything above here is just showing you about the school district. Um, lastly, um, just as a resource, uh, if people are looking for tax relief, um, the state um, does have a couple of programs out there. And if you go to that website, um, you can download the form and see if you qualify for some property tax relief. Um, and then before I turn it back to the chair um, for public comment, um, what will be on the agenda next, I believe, is for the board to certify the levy. And at this meeting, you actually want to certify to the penny. And that number, um, whoever wants to make the motion, is 2,959,195.32. So that's what the board would be taking action at today. And with that, I'll turn it um, to the chair to open the meeting up for any public comments. Okay, do we have any public comments? No public comments. So then we would move to certify the 2021 levy. And Matt, you have anything you need to add? Nope. So, uh, Steve, pretty much uh, I uh, covered this, um, but the, the levy dollar amount that uh, the board would certify tonight would be $2,959,195.32. And that would be the paid 2021 levy. So, we need a motion. I can make the motion. Um, introduce the motion. Uh, the motion is to approve the pay 2021 levy of $2,959,195.32. Is we have a second for that motion? Second from Thomas. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Close say no. Carried. Okay, and then do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. <laughs> we have a motion from Rick to adjourn the meeting. A second. A second from Cheryl. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried.